Well, thank you. I'm going to try to stick to time here. Um, so thank you all for attending um, the call this morning uh, or, or all day today. Um, I am, uh, as uh, was mentioned, I am the PI of the um, of the coordinating center, um, and I'm going to try to give a, a bit of a recap of what we've done over the last five years. Um, I suppose I would be remiss um, if I didn't mention that the hub has been the, the activity over the past five years has been um, truly a collaborative effort, and we wouldn't be anywhere. Um, near where we've been today without the wonderful contributions of of all of the participants in face space the, the consortium and i want to recognize the the hub team um which many of you who've interacted with face space have met chris of course who is uh who is uh leading us today yang chai who is um my co-pi on the hub rob schuler who is on the phone alejandro Bukov, who is uh, i think also um, uh, listening in here and uh, Bridget Samuels. Um, so uh, the work I'm presenting here is all the result of, of a lot of their hard work uh, and, and efforts. Um, so let me start and Lou gave a, actually um, a wonderful introduction. Um, I, I, uh, uh, I should have, uh, she couldn't have set me up better. You know, I, I think it would be nice to start by outlaying what our goals were um, for the hub, uh, what we hope to achieve when we first started the second phase of this activity five years ago. And, and I think we've made, um, uh, uh, been reasonably successful in, in attempting to achieve our goals. Um, and, and Lou and I did not coordinate on this. Um, when I put out uh, our goals here, um, the, the primary thing that we wanted to accomplish with um, our technical and, and um, organization of the hub was not to create a repository for a bunch of independent data sets that were contributed by the uh, consortia. Um, and this is always a risk because of, you know, the, the fact that the, the, the data that was contributed was done through a standard peer review process. It wasn't kind of an integrated, in, in some sense, wasn't collected as an integrated set, but many individual investigators each looking at different pieces of the of the puzzle, and we'll hear about that through the rest of the day. So we believed it was really important to, to, um, to meld that into an integrated corpus or repository of data, a holistic linked resource to the extent possible, not just a repository of individual data sets that were disconnected to be retrieved. Um, and we wanted to do that by not only being able to stitch together uh, in, in an integrated way the data that was contributed by the consortium, but to contextualize that within uh, all of the other data um, uh, that, that was related to craniofacial research that is spread out throughout the NIH and, and other um, institutions. So things like the Track Hub, things like DBGAP and GEO, uh, those other locations. Um, so this notion of an integrated data collection was really first and foremost in our mind. And if you think about it a little bit, that's actually a little, it, that's actually um, unique uh, in many ways. If you look at the repositories that you're probably familiar with, and I gave you some examples like DBGAP or GEO, um, those aren't integrated um, collections or curated collections. So those are just kind of... Uh, lots of potentially well-described or not so well-described individual data submissions that that um, in many instances have nothing to do with one another and are not connected in any meaningful way. Um, so this notion of integration was really important to us. Um, we also wanted to um, make it possible to keep up with the inflow uh, of data in the new types of data that um, invariably that you would see over the, the past uh, over the, the the past five years and of course in the coming years as well, um, and we believe that a critical element of that was to um, be able to provide high quality curation on that data while not putting a significant uh, time lag. Between the submission and the availability of that data. <laughs> and so um, one of our primary goals was to promote what we call self-curation. 
So the idea that when an investigator created a piece of data, they could make it available to the community, um, essentially as soon as they were happy with the quality uh, of that data. So we spent a lot of time and effort developing tools and interfaces to allow users to submit data and um, putting in place release processing and pipelines so we could do some quality control on that. And if you also think about it, it's a little bit um, in contrary to this goal of integration, right? That if you want rapid turnaround, the way to get rapid turnaround is basically not to provide any information or context of the data. Um, so a big challenge was how do you balance the desire for rapid turnaround with data integration and data quality? Um, so we spent a lot of time working on that. We also wanted to create the ability to start driving data products or ut utilization of that data. So we've spent uh, also a fair amount of time looking at how to uh, enable uh, the creation of derived data products. Um, how do we interface with, uh, with analysis and analytic pipelines? Um, and then how do we drive additional value of the data from that? And we'll hear about, uh, hopefully, uh, um, later in the day about some of that work. Um, so, for example, um, we invested a lot of effort in being able to take um, all of the um, RNA-seq data or much of the RNA-seq data that had been submitted by the individual investigators, running uniform analytics pipelines on that and pu pushing that data back in. Um, so, again, this has... Uh, demonstrates the ability to do analysis and analytics on the elements to treat um, to treat the face-based data as an integrated collection, not just uh, uh, individual elements, and then actually to drive that integration through further analytic product uh, that crosses uh, investigator boundaries. Uh, another point we wanted to drive was um, the ability to for the repository to follow what had become known as this the FAIR principles for, um, for data. Uh, so FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible. Um, this is kind of a, um, a theme and an approach that's gaining a lot of traction both within the NIH and outside of the NIH. So it's this notion of how can we maximize the value of data um, by, by giving it certain properties associated to how it's described and how you re retrieve it, um, um, how is it structured. Um, so we've done a lot of work on drive the overall structure of the face base uh, hub and the contribution and all the interfaces to follow these so-called FAIR principles. One of the important aspects of that is to drive the notion of being able to cite data like you cite a pub publication. So we've also done a, a lot of work on making data citable that goes into reproducibility and it also goes into um, uh, um, the ability to access the data. Uh, and so every piece of data in the face-based repository is citable and can appear as a citation of publications. We think that's going to, in the future, be a really important uh, mechanism for driving community and reuse of the data. So that was another important thing. And finally, um, we were very much interested in, in uh, again, as Lou mentioned, how can we drive the utility of the um, face-based repository or data collection to the community um, through enhancing what you could do with the data kind of in place. Um, so we've done a fair amount of work on on um, modality specific visualization and end user experience to try to drive the, the value of the repository um, for the end user up as, uh, as high as possible. And, and we can see, I think, success in that, for example, in um, if we look at the, the number of people who, for example, looked at pictures without downloading the data, but just being information from looking at pictures of the data, we can see the user statistics kind of support um, that idea of, of enhanced user experience. So these were the goals that we um, actually set out for ourselves when we started this phase of the hub. And I'd like to think we've made significant progress in achieving all of these. So let's look at a little bit of a, a blow by blow of, of what's happened um, uh, over the past five years. Um, so as some of you may know, in the first phase, um, the, the hub was run by Mary Mayazita at, at uh, Pittsburgh. And uh, so one of the first things we needed to do, or, or uh, University of Pittsburgh, 
uh, hopefully I've said the institution name uh, correctly. Um, so one of the first things we needed to do was, uh, well, not only the physical process of moving the data, but we went through and uh, setting up the consortium, but we went through kind of a significant phase of analysis where we looked at the types of data and the types of things that we were coming in and um, built up uh, uh, what, what's referred to in uh, kind of the, in the computer science thing side of, of the, the world as a data model. So we spent a lot of time thinking about what's the structure of the information that face space represents, what are the types of information, what kinds of things are, are we going to need to capture to make the data reusable um, and findable, uh, and build out kind of explicitly what that structure looks like um, so that we can maximize the integration and the utility of the data. And what you'll see is we've actually built out a reasonably detailed experimental model that describes how the data was acquired, what it was acquired from, how the pieces relate to one another. And this ends up being critical for being able to drive utility. So for example, uh, let me give you, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but because we have a detailed experimental model that describes the, the subject, the samples that the data came from, the so-called what, what are referred to as replicates, so the number of copies of the data and the copies of the measurements that were taking place, and details about how the, um, the underlying, in this case, sequencing was done. We were able to, um, Axel was able to uh, basically rerun um, the RNA-seq pipelines across all of the face-to-face -face data. So this is an example of how we were able to drive reusability of the data by having detailed descriptions of how the data was collected and generated. And in this case, these descriptions are actually more detailed than what you would see in the standard repositories like GEO. There's not enough information there to actually redo the processing that we were able to do using the new face space model. Um, so that resulted in um, a newly designed site. This is uh, hopefully all of you have looked at the um, face space site. Um, and so this was just a snapshot of, of the home page that uh, went through several iterations. Um, so I won't dwell on that. Uh, after we basically did the initial trans transition, we spent a lot of time kind of enhancing, cleaning up data, um, working on enhancing the model, starting to take in new data from the, from the contributors. Um, we've also um, instituted a pretty rich security model, uh, an access control model. So it turns out that's important because we were driving um, the ability for the community to contribute data without um, having the intervention of the face-based hub in doing the curation and data quality assurance. This required the ability for us to allow um, contributing groups to create new data, to do editing and quality control on that data, before it was released to the general public. So we've uh, put in place a pretty sophisticated, um, but hopefully not so hard to use model that allows um, arbitrary groups or, or well-defined groups to contribute and edit and curate their data prior to public release. Um, we did a lot of work on integrating in with standard terms, um, um, including OCDM and other um, uh, vocabulary so we could connect the data uh, um, into the global context of external sources. We did um, continue on trying to refine the classification and description of the data elements. And throughout the course, uh, we've, we've tried to focus on usability um, and user experience. So we've engaged in some degree of, of formal user testing. This is a a user interface development methodology that's kind of best practice in the industry that, that we followed. Um, so that was uh, our year two. Uh, one of the examples of where this showed up is we realized that um, uh, there was a, a, a great desire for people to find data based on either anatomical feature um, or developmental stage. So that led to the development of a specialized uh, user interface here which allows us in one view to uh, look at all the anatomical um, uh, regions for which we have information, the developmental stage, in this case, this is mouse data, so the developmental stage of the mouse, and then the type of experiment that uh, we were performing, and to be able to rapidly kind of zoom in on a particular uh, assay type, uh, 
anatomical feature and developmental stage. Uh, and I might point out here that um, underneath this um, essentially 3D representation of the data, all of the elements that you're seeing here come from so-called controlled vocabulary. So um, all of these anatomical terms um, and developmental stages and many of the uh, experimental modalities are connected to well-defined terms, either the OCDM or um, the ontology of bio biological investigations or other standard controlled vocabulary, which enhances the ability for us to connect the data into other data sources uh, and enhance uh, discoverability or findability of our data. Uh, year three, um, we uh, enhanced uh, the sophistication of the repository, um, doing a more kind of uh, integration element, uh, uh, integration activities, um, cross uh, new visualizations, um, better linkage across the data sets, and we um, integrated a uh, custom genome browser, which I'll show you a picture of uh, shortly, uh, and then rolled out our self curation tools. Uh, the self-curation tools, I think, have been very interesting. Um, we have been, I would say, pretty successful in getting uh, investigators. Maybe we'll, we'll, um, we'll validate this. We've been pretty successful in getting investigators to submit and curate their own data. Um, the quality of the curation appears to be, um, appears to be high. Um, and it's been, I think, um, where we've gotten investigators to actually contribute and curate data through the self-curation tools for which they actually have not been paid to submit their data. Um, so we have face-based funded investigators submit additional data because they felt they wanted it to be part of the, of the collection. And I think this bodes well to the ability, as Lou was saying, uh, to allow a broader range of investigators to submit uh, data to uh, a future face-based. Um, Let's see, uh, I think I've pretty much covered this. Yeah, so a lot of work in increasing the, the use and reuse of controlled vocabulary terms. We've been working with the Monarch Initiative to try to um, tie in better with the uh, developmental ontology. Um, uh, so just kind of enhanced integration. Um, in the fourth year, um, we initiated our work uh, on the pipelines with uh, Axel's group. Um, so we demonstrated the ability to create data and export data collections from the overall um, repository and to feed those into pipelines to create new derived data products, which enhance the value of the collection because we're actually now driving new data that describes the collection from the collection and, and allows us to get new knowledge from that. Um, Various improvements in um, the user visualizations and the user interface tools. Um, we introduced also in year four uh, uh, a comprehensive uh, uh, mechanism for data citation. Um, so now every element in the um, face-based data hub has got a unique identifier. Um, we can assign digital object identifiers to data collections now. Um, so this enhances our ability to cite and share data within the community, both in an informal and a formal setting. Uh, and uh, continuous work in, um, in, in streamlining the process of data submission. Uh, we've also provided uh, now the ability to do so-called bulk uploads, so we can upload large data sets in addition to using the user interface to drive the submissions. Um, we'll hear, I'm not sure if we'll hear um, uh, more about the bioinformatics pipeline, but we spent a fair amount of time uh, 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 working on this. This, I think, is a really exciting um, direction because, again, it shows an example of how you could use the face-based data repository for um, secondary analysis and analytics on that data, um, which will then become of value to the general community. Um, so in this case, what we wanted to do was to kind of level set all of the RNA seeks so the data was comparable across investigators. To do that, we wanted to run a standard uh, analytics pipeline um, across all of the data that was applicable. Uh, we collaborated with Mike Cherry uh, in the ENCODE group to, to converge on the ENCODE pipeline is the one to use. Uh, and so essentially what we've done is we've been able to take the data that's submitted to FaceBase in the FaceBase model, identify the subsets of those data that we want to do the, the unified analytics on, extract that data, 
uh, we actually then ship that off to a third-party cloud uh, analytics provider called DNA Nexus, where, where we ran the ENCODE pipeline on all of that data, producing the gene expression levels. And those were then imported back into the repository and associated with all the raw experimental data, right? And now the beauty of this is if we decide we want to do another pipeline um, or there's an improved pipeline down the road, we can easily reproduce this entire operation with a new pipeline. And everything has been versioned and tracked so we know exactly what's happened uh, on this data. So this starts to give you a, uh, the, a feeling for how we can take the, the, the individual contributions, aggregate them into uh, a holistic repository, use that to drive secondary analysis on that data, produce a new data product, re-ingest that data product back into the hub, uh, integrate that with the source data so we know where everything came from, so we can reproduce those experiments, right? And then track and name all that stuff. So I think this really is indicative of the power of doing this kind of integrated hub. Um, and so uh, in, in year five, we continue to focus on this bioinformatics pipeline, um, continue um, enhancements of our use of controlled vocabulary, um, a lot of work in data curation, releasing lots of new data sets. We've done some enhanced visualization. And then we've also introduced a bulk download capability. So we now have the ability to identify arbitrary subsets of data within the repository and download in a very robust reproducible way um, so we can do the kinds of things like the, um, the, the uh, large-scale um, uh, expression analysis that Axel's group did. Um, and, um, oh, just a couple of other miscellaneous things. Um, again, we've got ubiquitous uh, identifiers in all of our data elements. Uh, we also have um, um, detailed versioning in, in history on all of our data, so we track every single change. So you can refer back to a particular piece of data at a specific instance in time. This is very important for reproducibility. We basically have, uh, you know, are working on finishing the ingest um, and curating data from all the spokes with the idea that, um, you know, ultimately we would like to see more general contributions to the repository. And we've done some final transition work uh, associated, I think Mary will talk about some of this work in the future, so I won't go on with that. Um, so let me just show you uh, a couple of pictures here. So this is uh, some work we've done um, with looking at some of the 3D anatomical data. So this is actually, um, uh, we see the future of bringing in 3D interact, 2D and interact, and 3D interactive um, visualizations as being a mechanism for doing navigation since so much of our data is anatomical basically using anatomy as the ability to search and navigate through data. Uh, so this is an example. Maybe if I have time, I'll show you this very interactively. This is and by the way, you have five minutes. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm probably, well, I should finish so people can ask questions. Um, so this is an interactive 3D viewer. This is actually micro CT data that uh, uh, Yang's uh, group generated. Um, but this is quite interesting because we're, what we're actually looking at here is data. So we have the raw 3D data, we have all the experimental data associated with how this mouse was created and the measurements that took place on it. Um, so we've got all the experimental data. Uh, this is interactive. And then we've got anatomical terms associated with each of these regions, so we can tie this back to the rest of the data we have about those terms. Let me just tell you a little bit about what we've achieved. Um, so we currently have eight, over 800 data sets and growing. There's been 141 publications that have cited face-based data. Um, and as of uh, April in 2019, we have over six terabytes of data with 18 different assay and experimental types all linked together. So these, again, are not individual. We've connected all the dots into a uniform uh, experimental model. Um, so that these are an integrated data set with all these different uh, experimental types and assays. And I think this is actually pretty unique is the ability to integrate all these different types of, uh, of assays and collections in a non-trivial way, um, which we've managed to achieve. We've got over 50,000 page views, uh, 20,000 sessions, um, 13,000 users that we've measured. Um, uh, quite a few uh, file downloads, so we've had over 500 file downloads uh, and quite a few um, thumbnails, um, which again goes to this notion of people um, are able to extract information from face space from the visual data that we've pre presented 
um, not just um, by downloading files. So the metrics that we um, that we use um, are not just traditional page page downloads, uh, data downloads. Um, and we've gotten a fair amount of traction. We have an integration with UCSC uh, Genome Browser, um, so we've seen quite a few interactions through the through the UCSC um, Genome Browser going to FaceSpace where they retrieve the, the track hubs from uh, our data. So we we hold all the data that happens to be visualized through the UCSC site. Uh, so that's some idea of of the um, uh, usage. Um, we've got lots of things that we could be looking at in the future. Um, uh, let me, Two um, sorry? Two minutes. Two minutes. So let me just skip over this really quickly. Um, and let me just show you, oops, let me just, if I can do this. So let me just show you very quickly um, um, in my remaining two minutes. Uh, some just quick examples. So you'll notice here I've got these URLs. So this is actually the um, face base um, permanent identifier. So these are all citable. So you'll see if we go here, these are guaranteed to always be good, um, whereas um, a URL to a web page is not. So we promise these will always be valid. Um, so this goes to um, the fair data principles. So here's an example of this mouse matrix I showed you. Um, one of the things we've done is we've added landmarks so we can we can um, look at uh, particular features. And then again, these are linked back using the shared on, um, anatomical terms to the information about uh, those data. Um, let me uh, go back here. So uh, let me show you one other thing uh, in my remaining minute here. <laughs> So, as I mentioned, we had, well, let me just do this one here. I'll skip the track browser. I'll show you this. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been pushing on, um, you know, the value of multiple types of data. So here's some of, I believe this is Shannon's data for zebrafish. So what we see here is now we've got these thumbnails. Uh, so these are quite interesting. Um, so you can glean information from those directly. Um, and then, by integrating also additional visualization modalities, we can look here, and what we've got is the actual 3D data um, for this particular data set. We'll see here we have all the raw data um, associated with this um, with this particular data set. You'll see here these are all now linked against um, standard terms. So if we wanted to find, well, this is a micro CT data. What other micro CT data do we have? This is this idea of linking across common terms. Well, we see, oh, look, we actually have um, quite a bit of other uh, micro CT data from other investigators. So this is an example of the linkage that I spoke about. Um, so yeah. I think with that, I'll stop. That gives you an idea of what we've been uh, amusing ourselves with over the past five mm -hmm. years. Um, and um, and hopefully um, you, you'll have a chance to uh, to uh, look at the, this um, collection and use it in your own research. Okay, great, thank you so much, Carl.